I really don't like the doom and gloom prepper mentality. I, I, I can't get behind it. I mean, as right as it is everything you're saying, the way you're going about it is wrong. It's the general vibe that I have. About three months ago, I made a video about uh, signing a contract to come teach at Monticello College. And in order to do that, I needed to move to where the college is, which is in southeastern Utah. And so, you know, when COVID broke out, I had plans to move. And they start talking about border shutdowns, and I don't want to pay rent rates in the city where I'm at, and I really want to move to the country anyway. And one thing led to another, and so as soon as my classes moved online, my family and I moved by ourselves all the way to Monticello, Utah. That rain is terribly rude, ruining a good camera shot. So we've moved, um, and it's been awesome. The move itself was more than a little bit crazy. For one thing, we had to load the truck entirely on our own. We actually moved into the house without having looked at it first. I'd seen pictures and that was enough. We decided that we were just pulling the trigger and doing this thing. And we made our personal flight from the city. Now, in my mind, this gave so much peace being out in the country. Um, I could feel the unrest that was in the city. I mean, whenever you go to the grocery store and see empty shelves, I mean, you can feel that other people are freaking out and then you look left and you look right and you start thinking, uh, maybe I should be freaking out too because other people are freaking out. It's one of those, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself type things. And so I felt intense relief at moving to the country, moving from a town of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to a town of like 2,000 people. This is about as rural as you can get. It's quiet. Everybody waves in their cars as they pass by. It's a little bit strange. And I've lived kind of rural before, but not like this. And then I've been able to come up and, and do some work for the college, and that's been nice too, where we have this emphasis on off-grid skills and living in a prepared way. <laughs> it's not like that will ever come in handy. And then uh, the liberal arts education, and liberal arts traditionally is about the proper use of leisure. In other words, if you had all the free time in the world, what would you do that would be worth your time? How would you grow? How would you become better? And that's exciting too. So it's really funny that I ran from the city, which, you know, is full of densely packed people and high rent rates and um, stress and the potential for zombie invasions or just people who are, you know, freaking out for justified reasons in tight and closed spaces. Uh, cities kind of freaked me out just a little bit. I uh, see a video over here on that. But in addition to all that, there's not just the flight from the city, but the flight to the country. And that brings up a book. There is a book that I love called Flight from the City by Ralph Borsodi. And the nutshell version of this book is that it's about homesteading, it's about the back to the land movement. Basically, the back to the land movement has become really strong whenever the economy has been terrible. And so in the 1930s, it was strong. In the 1918, 17, 16, basically World War I, it was good. World War II, it was good. In the 70s, after the oil crisis, it was great. Um, and now after 2008, we've had kind of a long string of people interested in homesteading and off-grid living and kind of going back to the land. And this guy, uh, Ralph Borsodi, wrote in about 1936 and wrote this book called Flight from the City. And you really can write a book about moving to the country in two ways. You can write about what you're running from or what you're running to. And Mr. Borsodi does a beautiful job of writing about both. I really don't like the doom and gloom prepper mentality. I, I, I can't get behind it. I mean, as right as it is everything you're saying, the way you're going about it is wrong, is the general vibe that I have. Because um, an appropriate uh, way to approach the world is with gratitude and wonder, what the Greeks would call arete, or virtue. Uh, the appropriate way to show that virtue is with gratitude and a sense of wonder. And so Mr. Borsodi has, you know, a couple chapters where he talks about, you know, his struggle in the city, and basically it's just a desk job struggle. And then, and then he talks about what he ran to. 
And so he's talking about building a house with his own two hands. He's talking about the creative expression that he has and all these crafts that he picked up. And then he has this delightful chapter where he talks about ice cream. And he basically says, you know, I have an unlimited supply of milk, basically, because we raise our own dairy. And uh, we make homemade ice cream every day, as much as we can eat, and a little bit more. And it's fresh, so fresh. You can't buy it this fresh. And it's got fruit juices and, and sugar and all the things that we're producing ourselves, like maple sugar and every ingredient in it, uh, we know exactly where it came from. And so the quality is unparalleled. Oh, and the quantity? Yeah, we have so much it would just make you sick. And so he's basically bragging and saying, I eat more ice cream than you do. <laughs> and it's delicious. And that, in my mind, is the right way to do it. Um, if you're going to do the homesteading, self-sufficiency, home production, seize the means of production thing, and try to live in an independent way, uh, seize the means of production individually and not by means of the state, that is. Uh, that's the distributivist versus the communist model. If you're going to do that, I think it is so important, or if you're prepping, you need to do it because it's good now, not just because it will be good in the future. That's another problem with prepping. It can't just be good in the future. And so you need to have something, sure, you can run from something, but you need to also run to something, and that to needs to be good, like really, really genuinely good. And my experience here has been so far good. I mean, two months in, we'll see what happens later on. But I am grateful that we have made a personal flight from the city. Um, psychically or, or psychologically, uh, it's been super, super good for me to be out in the country. And I think once we get past the loneliness of COVID, um, it'll be good for my family as well. As soon as my kids can play with other kids and you know we can go outside again with other people. In the meantime, hold the vision of what you're running to, not just what we're running from. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe below. And if you are interested in supporting our work on Patreon, uh, we don't actually have a Patreon. What we have is our own website. So down in the link below in the description, we have a website, goodandbasic.com. And if you're interested in supporting us, then we would deeply appreciate that. Um, and then you can continue enjoying videos like this one and many, many more projects which are in the works now that I'm done moving. So exciting times. We'll see you later.